Welcome to worship here at Rockville United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Martha Meredith, uh, the pastor of this church, and I'm grateful that you are here for this special night of worship when we remember the birth of Christ. This year in the church, we've been spending time preparing for this evening by thinking about being more present to others and more present to God, even more present to ourselves, paying attention, spending a little bit less time worrying about buying the perfect gift and a little bit more time realizing that the gift that we can give to each other and the best gift that we can give is ourselves. So I, I think that... Um, that's really the most valuable thing for us. And one of the things that, one of the names of Jesus is Emmanuel, which means God with us. And for that, we give great thanks uh, today. I invite you now to join me in singing In the Bleak Midwinter, the fourth verse, which is in your bulletin. <laughs> We have unwrapped a present on each Sunday of Advent with great anticipation for the gifts that God reveals. We opened our hearts as we opened the gifts. We opened a candle for hope, the gift of hope, that essential survival tool that we need. That essential survival tool that we need to survive in this world that can sometimes seem so dark. We opened a candle for the gift of peace that reminds us that Christ came to bring us peace, peace in our hearts and also peace to the world. We opened a candle for joy, the reminder that joy is more than just happiness, but it is this a simple appreciation for the good gifts that God gives to us and this reveling in those gifts and sharing that with others. And of course, the gift of love is our clarion call as disciples of Christ. We are called to be Christ's love in this world. And tonight, we celebrate the presence of light among us. And so I invite you to stand as you're able, stand where you are, and turn to the back and greet the light of Christ as it comes into our worship space. Let us pray. Holy living God, you are our light. Let this light grow in our lives each day so we can be a present of light to others. Unwrap and open our hearts. 
May it be so. Amen. Please remain standing and turn in your hymnals to number 246 as we sing Joy to the World. On this blessed night, I invite you to turn to the people who are around you and exchange with them signs of Christ's peace, a handshake, a wave, just to say peace of Christ. Peace be with you. Now, as you find your seats, I invite you to turn in your hymnals to number 251 and as a way to, to proclaim to get ready to proclaim the gospel, we'll sing this Go Tell It on the Mountain. You may be seated.
The scripture we read tonight is from a time when the people of Israel were scattered and afraid, feeling alone and despondent. Isaiah spoke a word to them to remind them that God was and would always be present with them. Let us read responsively this passage from selected verses of Isaiah 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when they divide plunder. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace. For the throne of David and his kingdom, he will establish and uphold it from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Please rise as you're able to sing It Came Upon the Midnight Clear, number 218 in the United Methodist Hymnal. <clears throat>
An image of God that is present throughout our scripture is, please be seated, is God as a shepherd who gently leads and cares for us. Tonight in our Christmas story are the shepherds who know how to care for their flocks. They're the ones who first hear the good news. And while the brilliant light of the angel's light initially frightens them, they receive the good news, believe it, and run to see the baby in Bethlehem. Hear the story from the Gospel of Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinus was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to, has made known to us. So they went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the good news. Praise to you, O Christ. Rise as you're able to sing the first four verses of O Come All Ye Faithful, number 234 in the Red Hymnal.
Please be seated. The music has been such a blessing. It's a blessing to hear you all sing and the choir sing and the instrumentalist. We're just so grateful for that blessing of music that makes Christmas seem like Christmas, right? Will you pray with me? Lord, on this holy night, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. You know, there's something about this scripture from Luke that brings this sense of stillness and peace, I think, among the hearers. I've told this story before, but the first time I read that scripture in public, I was in high school. And back in those days in Alabama, you know, we did that. It was to a bunch of teenagers crowded in a gymnasium all hope, you know, they were kind of hopped up on normal hormones and the excitement of Christmas and the coming vacation. And I remember that day, it seemed like a minor miracle because I had no idea if anybody was going to hear a word I said, but that rambunctious group 
of teenagers became still and silent for this ancient story of God's love come to earth. And that silence likely occurs almost everywhere tonight where the scripture is read, with the exception of children's services. I just had one of those, and it was, it was rambunctious. <laughs> Amen is right. After a long season of preparation for you all, you know, after you've uh, been shopping and you've been going to gatherings and some of you have gone to children or grandchildren's events and church events and, and all sorts of things, and finally we are still. It's dark outside and candles are lit in here. Hmm. And we pause and we remember that on this night we're joined with our ancestors in the faith who have been listening to this story as they gathered to celebrate the incarnation, the feast of the incarnation, the birth of Christ. For many years, for over 2,000 years. And this is the remarkable story in a nutshell. We are loved by God so much that God came to this earth to live in the life of a baby born on a dark night a long time ago. A Holy Spirit hush comes upon us as we think about Mary and Joseph who traveled to Bethlehem because the Emperor Augustus commanded a census of all his subjects and so heavy with child, Mary was, of course, in no shape to travel. But she and Joseph traveled to Bethlehem, the home of Joseph's ancestor, David, to be counted. And, of course, babies have their own timetables, don't they? And that baby decided to come while they were on that trip. So while they're in Bethlehem, staying in a place where the animals are kept at night, Mary delivered her baby boy. And she wrapped him up and laid him in a manger. Just like with, in the presence of any new baby, I imagine that Joseph took those rough carpenter hands of his and stroked the baby's cheek and rubbed his downy head. While Mary drew back the covers every now and then to count his toes and fingers, ten toes, ten fingers, that's right, that's good. Perhaps she lifted up that little foot to her lips and pressed a kiss into the soft flesh. A simple birth in a strange place on a dark night that happened with no fanfare. No fanfare. I wonder if it was because God is present in this vulnerability of this newborn baby that we become quiet. For we all know what it means to be vulnerable. Vulnerable to the decisions of the powers that be, the powers of the world. Vulnerable to displacement, vulnerable to loneliness, vulnerable to death, our death and the death of those we love. God made flesh and this little baby lay sleeping under the watchful eye of his mother and father as defenseless as any little baby ever born. Of course, the Holy Family didn't spend the whole night alone or in the, the heavenly angels couldn't contain their joy. They broke out of the silence. They knew what God had done. They broke out and they shouted the good news. They didn't go to the great Emperor Augustus or to King Herod. They found the shepherds in the field, minding the sheep in the silence of the night. And God's glory burst out upon those shepherds, a bright light in a dark sky, out of which an angel cried, Do not be afraid. I'm bringing you good news of great joy to all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Messiah, the Lord. And we become still before these angels, too, because, you know, we hear these words, not just directed to those shepherds, but to you and to me. I am bringing you 
good news. To you, to you is born a Savior. And that solitary angel was joined by that host of angelic beings. And there was more of an eruption of joy filling the heavens, praising God and sharing a message of peace. Perhaps they remembered what Isaiah had foretold, those shepherds. For a child has been born for us, a son is given, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And his authority shall grow and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish justice and righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. Now the Emperor Augustus had established peace. You've heard about the Pax Romana. But he did it through military might which effectively and brutally put down any rebellion that surfaced here and there throughout the empire. And that's really the only kind of peace that empires can offer us. But God's peace is different. God's peace is completeness and soundness and total welfare, not just for me and not just for you, but for all people. That's the vision. We long for peace between Ukraine and Russia, between Israel and Hamas, between the warring factions in the continent of Africa and in the Americas to the south, in our classrooms, in our neighborhoods, on our streets. We long for peace in our work, and sometimes we long for peace in our families. We long for peace in our very souls. Jesus' birth was really the first insult, installment toward a lasting peace. And on this silent night, this holy night. We long for the fulfillment of that promise in our lives. We long for Christ's kingdom to come. We're silent on this night as we remember Mary, the mother of Jesus, so young and yet so devoted to God's will. She treasured each miraculous moment and it, the scripture says she pondered them in her heart, and perhaps her memories of that night sustained her in the days ahead when times were hard. And her silent pondering calls you and me to do the same, to think deeply on this story and on the story of the whole life of Christ and to hold it close in our hearts when days are difficult and we can't maybe feel the presence of God, but we ponder the story. We remember God with us. Oh, we rejoice this night in the birth of the Savior. We sing out those old carols. My goodness, as I said earlier, you sounded beautiful. And we're humbled that God has entered our lives as a vulnerable baby. That God came not only to the whole world, but to you and to me. And we long, we long for peace and justice amid the violence and the injustice of the world. We ponder and treasure these words, just storing them, so that we will have courage to be agents of justice and peace in our families, in our neighborhoods, in the world. And we ponder them so that we'll have strength and courage when our lives are, are filled with worry and pain. Courage to be bringers of justice. Beloved of God, you are in good company tonight. You're in the company of the prophets. You're in the, the company of the apostles, the martyrs, the saints. You're in the company of the people of this church company of people who seek for truth and peace. So I invite you, take the gift of God's peace into your hearts and know the peace of God which passes all understanding. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen.
please join in singing. Let us pray. We come to adore you, little one, on bended knee with hopeful heart and eyes stretched wide with wonder and awe. The gentleness of your gaze draws us into the mystery of all that lies beyond. And in that place of falling into joy, we yield all that we are to you. And we pray. We pray for those who are broken, for those who grieve, for those who seek answers, for trembling hands and the rumbling stomachs, for the haggard spirits and the ragged lives. For those who cling to the last best thing and those whose hearts pine for love. Bless us, O Lord, whom we adore, and turn our faces ever toward you for hope, for peace, for joy, for love, for light. For the sake of all that is holy, we come to adore you, O Christ, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before we hear the offertory, I'll invite you, if you brought gifts for the church tonight, we are not passing the plates, so those uh, boxes on the table in the middle of the narthex are for leaving Christmas offering, and I thank you for that. I thank you for your presence here tonight. That is a big gift. I thank you for the prayers that you pray, for the service that you give to the world, and for those of us who witness to Christ, I thank you for your witness as well.
may be seated. We're all invited to the table of Jesus. This is one of the ways we acknowledge the continual presence of his continual presence among us and what a gift that is. We remember his last supper with his disciples in which he offered an invitation for all of his followers to be together at meals, to break bread and lift cups and know that we are never alone. This is the invitation now, the gift of presence with each other, the gift of presence with Christ, present in this moment and to all who have ever gathered at his table, no matter where or when. Will you join me in the confession in your bulletin? There are times when we have cut ourselves off from this gift of presence. We distance ourselves from the hope, peace, joy, love, and light that is ours as heirs in the family of God. It seems too wonderful a gift, and yet the shepherd comes to find us, leading us gently back into safety, back into care, back into relationship. In this moment, we take a deep breath. Just take a moment and do that. We feel our bodies relax into the right here and the right now, and we acknowledge those regrets that are best let go. Know this, there are gifts with your name on them called grace, called forgiveness, called assurance. They're yours whenever you accept them and open them. They're already and always there for you. You don't have to be good enough to get them. They are there because of the nature of our loving God, God with us, Emmanuel. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. We have sung responses. I'm going to ask the choir to help me sing the, the pastor's part because I'm a little out of voice. And so, uh, but you respond if you want the music. It's on page 2257 in the small black hymnal uh, that is in your pew. The Lord. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, gift giver of all that exists. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ whom you sent to the in the fullness of time to be a light to the nations your own son came among us as a servant to be Emmanuel your presence with us he humbled himself in obedience to your will and freely accepted death on a cross by the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection you gave birth to your church 
delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Now with the boldness of the beloved children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. In the United Methodist Church, all are invited to come to the table. All is needed is just a willing spirit. And so you are all invited to come. We will take by intention. You will be given a wafer, and then you may dip it into the cup and take the, the communion in that way. I'm going to invite the servers to come forward now. And you will be directed by the ushers uh, to come forward. Table's prepared. I invite you to come.
Please join me in the prayer after receiving printed in your bulletin. <clears throat> Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves to others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'm going to invite the ushers to begin to turn down the lights. And I invite you to get your candles ready to be lit. Remember that when the light uh, comes to you, the unlit candle should be upright, uh, uh, should be bending over, excuse me, and the lit candle upright. By the end of the carol, there'll be, well, just your candles and the other candles that are lit here tonight. And although we love the light, darkness is holy too, because it was in the dark of the night that Jesus was born, from the dark of a womb. Our lives might not always feel calm or bright, but that does not mean that God is not present. It means sometimes that God is growing something within us, waiting to be born. Too often we try to rush out of the darkness when we aren't even sure what's next for us. But if we'll just sit with our darkness for a time, and sometimes it seems too long, but if we can sit with that, then our eyes will adjust. God will begin to help us see more clearly. So now, let's bring the lights down as we get ready to sing Silent Night. And I invite you to stand.
carols over, but just take a moment, hold up your candles and look around. Mm. You are a beautiful sight. I always think it's like a heavenly sight. And so I don't take it for granted to be able to stand here and look at you and say thank you for being here tonight, for the gift of your presence. And so now, will you join me in the benediction, if you can see it in your bulletin. <laughs> the good news of Jesus Christ is that God is with us no matter what, no matter where, no matter when. There is no place you can go where God is not. No time of day when God is off the clock. This is the teaching of the incarnation, God with us, Emmanuel. Again, thank you for your presence here tonight. What a gift it has been. So now go, go and be truly present to the world that is out there so you may be a gift of presence for others. That's really all that is expected, that the gift of you is the best gift that you can give to others. And so may God's peace go with you. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.